we find two processes always and concurrently at work in the domain of the ego one the ego says it feels insecure so it is constantly seeking vistas of security that's the first thing and secondly all the securities that the ego arranges for itself are necessarily false not by chance but by design such is the nature of the ego on the one hand it says i want security on the other hand it deliberately arranges only false security for itself why false security because true security would be the end of the ego hmm? it tells itself oh i do not like the situation i am in unsafe insecure i don't like it i want to be carefree i want to be fearless on the other hand it will purposefully avoid doing that which will give it true fearlessness the position of the ego is unenviable with insecurity it is uncomfortable without insecurity it is dead that's what you get as the ego either discomfort or death choose so obviously you choose discomfort over death right what does that mean that you consciously to the extent the word consciously can be applied to the ego hmm? that you consciously arrange false comfort for yourself you dare not tell yourself that you are arranging discomfort for yourself that would make you appear a lunatic in your own eyes so what do you do you convince yourself that you are arranging comfort and security and safety for yourself and you go out and fetch false versions of each of these or false substitutes of each of these that's what we are doing as mankind telling ourselves that we want to do good for good to ourselves huh we can't openly say we don't want our welfare we don't want good to happen to us so we say we want good to happen to us and then we arrange false goodness for ourselves false goodness which in the complete analysis is worse than actively harming oneself how do we arrange false security 
as we said by hedging our bets we say let's have this to secure ourselves let's have that to secure ourselves let's have plan a b c d let's have 40 kinds of backups if this thing won't turn out nice then let me have something else ready now what is happening in that process what is happening is that you are never really committing yourself to one thing which is bad but useful to the ego useful because it saves you the burden of firstly finding that one thing worth committing to please see what's happening hmm? you don't have one friend you can rely upon because well, that's very very expensive very demanding in inner terms such friends don't come cheap hmm? so you don't have that one friend how do you compensate for that by having 10 friends and none of those 10 friends are worth committing to nor are they going to demand commitment you can happily hang out they are good for weekend jaunts rave parties the usual flings getting it there does exist something worth committing to fully you can give it any name the rishis called it brahm that's the only way of living commit yourself to one central thing and then negotiate all that comes in its wake one who has consciously closed all doors to himself one who has burnt all bridges one who has left no doors available to knock at such is the one who's worthy of being the subject of the upanishads